All right, uh, we'll get started. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, it's gonna be an awesome, awesome evening of fellowship learning. Uh, good to see you all. Stephen, good to see you there. Uh, all right, uh, we have Ruth who will be leading us in worship tonight. That, that is going to be awesome. Looking forward to that. Uh, Ruth, over to you. Uh, yeah, just go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, hope everyone had nice Abigail. <laughs> hope everyone had a great week. Um, let's just before we start singing, let's just take a few minutes to um, quieten our hearts, quieten our minds. You might have had um, a long week busy day but um, let's just take some time to let's take some time to rest in his presence
always been there, oh God.
Yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for this time that we get to just spend in your presence, Lord. We commit the rest of uh, this meeting into your hands, Lord. We pray that we will truly um, enjoy this time, Lord Jesus, together in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Ruthie. Uh, thank you for leading us in the beautiful time of worship. Um, and without further ado, uh, we're going to go right into the word. Today, tonight, we have uh, Pastor Nancy, uh, who's the Associate Pastor for APC North, uh, who will be sharing with us. Uh, so excited to have you, uh, Pastor Nancy. Uh, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you. Go for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Roshan, and uh, thank you um, everybody for having me in the youth meeting here. And it's um, you know it's really uh, exciting. Like I get this opportunity to talk to all of you. I've seen some of the um, sessions that uh, you've had. Uh, it's uh, uploaded, and you know uh, some good content there. Some you know good stuff to learn um, from uh, from all the sessions. So and I was really excited when uh, Roshan said uh, you know that that. I'd have an opportunity to share here. So, you know, I uh, thank God for that. And uh, thank you, Pastor Roshan, for inviting me. Um, even as um, I was, you know, praying about the subject that I must uh, talk about today, um, I really felt that I must share something that uh, that is, um, you know, on my heart and something that has helped me over the years. Now, um, from what I'm going to share, you know, at the end of um, today's session, you might say, oh, Pastor, we already know all these things, you know, like you're, you're just repeating it. Um, and, you know, these are all simple things. Uh, however, you know, I'm reminded of what uh, Paul wrote to the Philippians and Philippians 3 and verse 1, where, you know, he said, uh, further, my brothers and sisters, um, Rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. So you know, some uh, sometimes uh, the most important things are the the simple things we've learned, um, you know, early on in our journey with God, and you know, those those are the things that um, continue to keep us strong. And and for me, you know, um, I I can truly vouch. To, uh, these truths and how they have built me up over the years and uh, I just thought I would go over uh, these these uh, um, you know simple uh, truths with all of us I hope that oh, that's okay everybody yeah okay great great thank you so much all right so um, I'll go ahead and share my screen with all of you and the topic of um, the message is uh, anchored Okay, anchored, and I'll tell you shortly why I have named it so. Um, so life is uh, full of you know different experiences. Sometimes these experiences are good, and we enjoy going through them. Uh, but then there are other times when um, life may seem difficult. Um, there are challenges that you know we have to endure. Um, so um, Jesus talked about this and he said, you know, whenever you, you build a house, you make sure that you build it nice and strong because, you know, you know that there are going to be seasons when it will rain, there will be windy seasons, you know, there will be um, uh, challenges, right, that, that, this, that this building has to face um, given the various changes in the weather. So Matthew 7, I've put down that uh, passage here for you. Matthew 7 verses 24 to 27. And I'll, I'll just read that uh, first verse there. It says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. So, you know, Jesus was talking about a strong house, a strong building. Uh, and then he goes um, further and talks about, uh, you know, a house that couldn't stand the test of time. So uh, in the same way in our lives, there are different things that come our way. Um, and uh, in, 
particularly in the in the challenging seasons um you know the question is whether we will come through it strong whether we we will be able to endure it uh, you know whether we will be able to um do well and still stay aligned to uh, what god wants uh, for us and our lives so um along the same thought you know um, about staying strong staying um uh, staying firm under challenges there are several scriptures that you can um, see in in the bible another passage is from ephesians 6 verse 13 where where paul writes about facing um uh, the enemy satan and you know demons and things like that so it's basically about spiritual warfare uh, and even when he talks about things like that you know he he goes ahead and says having done all to stand you know you've done your best to to stand what else should you do you know you should continue to stand so don't fall you know be be strong in god don't fall under um you know easy situations under difficult situations so um that strength to stand is very very important in our christian life um and our journey with god um i'd like to look at one particular verse this is from psalm 112 on verse 7 i'm just reading the the latter part of that scripture uh it says about a righteous man that his heart is steadfast trusting in the lord okay so we are talking about staying strong and here in this verse there's a word steadfast which is used this is the N- kjv version okay uh, and if you look it up in the greek it comes from uh the word um kun which uh, means to be erect to be firm or to be fixed okay and uh, as you look up different translations in english there are so many words that are used to describe this term steadfast um and some of those words would be fixed firmly fixed um you know some passages say that confident steady secure strong unshaken settled okay so all these words describe strength under pressure the okay? unshaken settled where um even when we go through um challenges you know that that have to do with uh, um us personally it could be things that we are dealing with in our family it could be things that are happening in our finances uh, it could be stuff that's going on with our health right or in our workplace different things under all these situations um can we be steady confident fixed you know firmly fixed unshaken settled steadfast okay so that is the question so as i have journeyed through life you know uh some of the things that i learned early on um uh, as a student uh, in school and college uh, and now you know through um, my journey as a professional and you know now in the ministry uh there are some things that have really helped me um in being steadfast okay so that's what i want to share with us and um as i describe these things i have chosen to use the term anchor okay so anchor or the image of an anchor um, right is uh, is is familiar to all of us and uh, anchor as a device like wikipedia has the simple definition it says uh, it's normally made of metal used to connect a vessel to the bed of a body of water to prevent the craft from drifting due to wind or current so uh, an anchor uh, is something that uh, is usually used in ships where, where they secure the ship once it's at the harbor uh, and uh, it's firmly secured okay so it doesn't move away uh, it doesn't wander away it doesn't uh, you know drift away right so it doesn't go astray so you can find it in its that same place you know the next day and the day after and you know as long as um, uh, the 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 people of the ship wanted there so uh, basically it stays put all right so in our christian lives you know what are these things that will secure us with god 
what are these things that will um, you know give us that anchor um, uh, in god and help us face life situations in a positive way so here are three anchors that i want to talk about and you know just like a little bit of description there i i um, i know young people like images so <laughs> intentionally you know, there's a, a picture of an anchor for you over there with all its parts and you know a, a ship that is uh, secure to the harbor with an anchor right so yeah just something for you to look at uh yes so uh, before I, i i share my key points on you know what these anchors um, are uh, particularly the ones that have really strengthened me in my life i just want to ask all of us here um, any any anchors uh, in your life that have helped you go through especially the rough patches so uh, maybe you want to put that in on the chat yeah so some anchors for you okay okay worship music coming from worship pastor that makes sense that's true yes any other anchors knowing that god is in control yeah thank you glads thank you so much yeah that that is totally um something we all depend on god's love thank you anisha alisha you know uh, that that is the core of our faith right god's love for us um shrili god's faithfulness very true yeah that also is an anchor uh, for us um, anyone else maybe one other person god's word sharon thank you thank you sharon yes god's word is is an anchor for us god's grace angela thank you um manuela favorite verses of encouragement and promise from god's word yes indeed you know so we we depend on all these um all of these and so much more um uh, you know from god things that are given to us to strengthen us in our journey so here are the three anchors that um, i i want us to consider um and so you know when we are anchored in these things it it gives us uh, the strength to be like that house that jesus was talking about um so when the season is good the house stands and even when the season is tough the house can still continue to stand so the first um, anchor here is identity okay anchored in identity so this cannot be you know emphasized enough uh, it may sound very simple but you know uh, it, it is so important for us to develop the right self image right so self image is about how we see ourselves uh, and um, here in in the um, presentation here you know you there's a picture that i've put for us which uh, I, i think again you know many of you would have already seen it so it's a it's a cat looking at its own reflection in a mirror and it sees a lion okay so that is the self image of that cat okay and i wish we can all be like that cat because our self image matters okay and self image is uh, our mental picture of uh, who we are it's based on on you know our, our perceived image of ourselves so uh, it's based on you know the characteristics that you know we think we have uh, and of course it's developed over time uh, based on experiences based on what other people say about us you know based on what's going on in our lives you know there are tough situations and you're being questioned and sometimes you wonder hey like who am i who um, who uh, am i really you know so uh, self image it comes out of this um and you know it determines the uh, perspective uh, of life for us so it's really really important and based on this self image what we end up doing is we um understand the world around us we look at it in a positive way or we might you know look at it in a negative way right um and obviously you know based on our self image we also relate with people so our relationships uh, um, are a reflection of who we think we are so i want us to to um uh, consider being anchored in our identity in christ you know our as believers as children of god our identity should really come from who we are in christ jesus okay and um, our entire image right should be based on this now uh, as new creation 
the word of God has so much to tell us um, about who we have become. And I have just put down like a couple of scriptures here, uh, but each one of these verses, right, as you sit and meditate on these scriptures, um, it, it just washes over you. And, um, you know, as, as um, uh, Jesus uh, in Ephesians 5, he talks about the word washing, uh, you know, the church and cleansing the church, uh, truly, the scriptures here, the word of God, you know, washes us individually in our hearts and just renews us to how God sees us, okay? And the challenge is uh, not just for us to read these verses and understand them, but, you know, God sees us in this manner. Uh, the question is, do I see myself in this manner, right? In a, in a, in a very, um, how do I put it, uh, in, in a very automatic way right? Like you're put in a situation and do you really see yourself as a child of God? Yeah. You understand it in your, in your head, but you know, is that a part of who you are? Is that what you believe? Is that how you um, live? But that is the question. So our identity or our self image should be based on who we are in Christ Jesus. I, and I have personalized these verses. Okay, I, I thought of putting, you know, we, we are children of God, but this is very personal. Okay, I am a child of God. Yeah, I am a child of God. I am loved by God. You know, the way Jesus is loved by God, the Father. I am a friend of God. I have been justified. I am a saint and a holy person to God. I am blessed. I am redeemed. I am complete in Christ. I am more than a conqueror in Christ, right? So when this becomes our self-talk and it becomes our self-image, God sees us like this. But when I see myself like this, right, the way I live my life, the way I deal with situations in my life, you know, uh, it, it, it really um, gets transformed. Right? Uh, I, I am able to do it God's way. So um, it, it's very critical to have this kind of a healthy self-image based on what God says about us. Okay? And it helps us face life's challenges. Um, uh, it, it helps us relate better with God. Right? So there are so many scriptures. I've just put down like a few of them here. But as you meditate on these scriptures, uh, you, uh, like we see that, you know, we are able to relate to God without shame, right? Without rejection, because you know, I know um, for a fact that, you know, I am a child of God, accepted by God. So there's no sense of being unloved by him. You know, even if that is the reality in our um, uh, natural emotions, we know that God's word doesn't change, right? We can always renew our minds. We can always, um, you know, repent before God and come to that place where we are free of shame, rejection, you know, and a sense of being, uh, feeling unloved by him. Instead, um, how, what do I, what do I feel? Like when I say feel, it's not just, uh, it's not just, you know, my spirit, but even in my emotions, in my soul, I can feel accepted by God. So coming to God, it's such a, such a joyful thing because God has accepted me, right? So uh, I can relate to God in this way. I can defeat any lies in my head. Okay, Satan yeah, has these lies to say about us that we are abandoned. We are not protected by God. You know, God doesn't care. God doesn't provide for uh, my every need. But when I am grounded in my identity in God, right? Uh, instead of saying these things to myself, I say something like, I am secure in him. You know, my God knows how to take care of me, right? He has provided for me. Uh, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So I am secure in him. So, you know, your self-image becomes that, that you are cared for and provided for. So um, again, right, uh, there can be lies in our minds that, that Satan um, uh, injects uh, in, into us and says things like, you know, you are worthless, uh, you're not enough, 
you're helpless right and these things happen to us when uh, we are going through you know a, a challenging uh, situation or some sort of a challenging relationship maybe at the workplace or at home uh, and you have all these questions about your yourself right you know, uh, at the workplace it could uh, it, it may not be somebody else challenging uh, your worth and value but it could be the the nature of the task ahead of you right and as you're doing it you're wondering hey can i even do this right but our significance and our self worth comes from who god says we are so when i when uh, i am grounded in this identity uh, that hey you know i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and you know uh, i have the holy spirit living on the inside of me who will empower me who will guide me right so that becomes my self talk and my my image right to myself is that yes i i god sees me as significant and i can do this right so uh, all these lies in our minds can be defeated by the truth of god's word and uh, developing the strong sense of identity in christ right uh, it it helps us face life's challenges it helps us relate rightly with god and it also you know helps us relate well with people right so uh, even uh, in situations where where we may be facing rejection from from people around us uh, that will not crush us because you know we are secure in who god has um, uh, you know made us in him and told us that you know we are in him so i just want to share one one uh, uh, example from my own life and this happened in uh, first year of of college um so uh, and this is not the only challenging situation in my life right but you know it's it's one that i remember uh, really uh, well and god has taken me through several others in all of them identity i didn't knowing my identity in christ has been like so um so a uh, foundational so this was in first year of college when um, the results came out and um, uh, i don't know about uh, all of us but you know first year right you study very hard so i studied really hard and i was expecting like you know good marks okay and the results come the strangest thing is that everybody got their results except two students in the in the um, uh, maybe it was in the college i don't know but two students did not get their results one was me okay uh and um, this was an unusual situation and they called it something like results are withheld so uh, i had to go talk to my my uh, college authorities and they sent me to the university um and nobody had any, nobody had an idea of what happened right um so everyone was giving their own inputs and saying oh maybe you scribbled something on the answer sheet you wrote your number wrong uh, i don't know i really don't know what i did but my result was withheld right and that was uh, like back in college it was traumatizing for me to think that man i am not going to get my results after studying so hard mm, so anyway like you know i spoke to my family they were very supportive but nobody had a clue of what happened and you know things were um, difficult because uh, my my lecturers had all these things to say about what i might have done wrong okay um, and so uh, there was it was a time of incredible self doubt and i was thinking like god what's wrong you know what's wrong with me what what did i do um, and you know uh, i've been praying i've been trusting you you gave me all these promises but here i am you know like unique personality my result has not come in the college and then uh, my uh, uh, professors told me you go and speak in the university and they they said uh, uh, in cases like this the results will only come like after two months or three months you know be prepared you are going to lose your uh, um, semester so i just came back home and i i just cried i said lord it's not happening you know you gave me um and, and the specific word which god gave me is when uh, you know you have exam fear god really speaks to you so that that uh, a passage was from you know jesus tells the disciples see uh, i'll see you on the other side <laughs> right so i knew i'm going to pass this year god is going to see me on the other side so that was my promise so i was like god you said you'll see me on the other side this is not happening i want my results right so i just it was such an incredible time of um you know um, fear and self doubt for me but what took me through is my identity in christ where i said okay i'm still loved by god 
you know god is still on my side um uh, I, i'm more than a conqueror th through him who loves me right so these this is the way i had to really battle uh, in that situation and the strangest thing happened and i i think for the first time ever the withheld results were given in two weeks if i'm not wrong about the timing but everyone in college was like hey it never happens i was like it happened <laughs> right so you know god came through for me uh, with with a miracle but it, that was like you know uh, one of those challenging situations and there there are so many right like through professional years and even sometimes now when uh, like pastor roshan told me uh, share today i was like god i have to meditate on my identity in christ right so it really like who who you are in christ right knowing that uh, having that self image working that out with god carries you through uh, in life and it really anchors you in god so you know i i want to encourage all of us to to make this um, a, a priority for all of us so i hope you you all are um, there and you're awake because um, like this is my first time sharing at 9 pm also so i'm awake okay yes everybody is awake thank you so much all right we'll continue so that's the first anchor to be anchored in identity now the next anchor that i want to talk about is godly values right so again like i've seen in my life you know through school through college through um, you know your professional life your ministry now these are some things that that really give you a um, a strong bearing in god and uh, these things must define us you know, who we are um, so i've put down four uh, values here for us now these values um you know they they are from the very nature of god and scriptures tell us that we are supposed to represent god right so when we have these values when we carry these values we are able to reflect god to the world around us uh, but you know more so it's it's our worship to god we are becoming more like jesus when we are walking with these values so the first value that i've put down here is integrity okay integrity um if you put it in a simple uh, way it is saying the truth and living the truth okay uh, now that is from the nature of god because you know the bible says god never lies god cannot lie okay the bible says that god cannot lie so uh, god is a god of integrity now uh, i've put down a dictionary um, meaning of that word here and, and it it says incorruptibility soundness completeness so integrity is when you um, uh, speak the truth and you're walking in the truth okay i like to look at it this way like if um, i am buying a vanilla cake right it has to be a vanilla cake like if i cut the cake and it is something else i'm like what happened right where is the integrity of this cake but i know these days you have all these fancy cakes they look something like something outside and there's something inside right but that's not what we are talking about integrity is same outside same inside okay uh, and that is truth living for the truth uh, and when we develop that right when we grow in integrity uh, with god uh, it it strengthens us it positions us right uh, in the in god and you know in the right way in in life's um, journey uh, i'm reminded of joseph right joseph when he related with god um, you know god was everything to him and we know that this is a man who went from uh, from pit to prison and you know prison to prime minister uh, but what was one thing that marked his life integrity okay uh, and the incident when Uh, he was tempted by potiphar's wife in genesis 39 verse 9 now you see his response okay amazing response he has you know uh, he could have lived whichever way and nobody would have known about it right or at least he could have told himself that but because he knew god you know he responds to potiphar's wife and he says i cannot sin against god you know i cannot commit this sin against god so whatever we do is for god right it's for god or against god and living that life of truth was so important for joseph so integrity as a value must define us okay and and that uh, becomes an anchor in our lives now the second value uh, i've put down for us is excellence 
okay excellence uh, when you know peter writes to um, uh, um, writes to the believers you know, he he asks them to grow in in christ so in second peter chapter 1 verse, uh, verses 5 through 9 you know, he says okay grow up in god um, uh, you keep growing by adding different things to you know your faith journey so there he lists out to your faith add virtue in verse 5 to your faith add virtue right so when you look up the meaning of that word virtue it actually means excellence so when we have this value of excellence you know god is glorified it comes from the nature or, or it comes from god's nature you know the way he has created us the way he um, you know oversees uh, uh, the world there is excellence in there uh, and we must reflect that same excellence so at the of faith excellence okay uh, and uh, one good example in god's word uh, about excellence is daniel daniel there are a couple of times when people who view him right they say here is a man who has the spirit of excellence he has the spirit of excellence and we know that spirit of excellence is the holy spirit who was working in him and was you know leading him on the right tracks so excellence you know work for excellence live with excellence and always carry excellence in your journey and that will anchor you um, uh, you know strong and uh, cause you to to stand firm uh, in all situations in life here are two more uh, values i have listed one the third one is purity okay um, now our god you know very very directly he says uh, be holy for i am holy okay holiness is being set apart so when we are set apart what we are saying is i belong to i belong to god okay and when you belong to let's say you belong to an institution um, you um, belong to a community there are certain things that come along with it isn't it so in the same way when we belong to god there is a walk of holiness that god wants from us and a, you know a walk of purity um, so that is something we can pursue in our lives and you know god strengthens us to live that life out um, pertaining to different aspects of our life um, and particularly you know with regard to the body the bible says that don't you know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit so we, we've got to pursue purity and holiness and also with regard to our physical body so you know when it comes to abusing it with substances or getting into you know the the wrong kind of um, things out in the world out there um, you know all of us know that that um, people are okay with different uh, you know sins but we as god's people you know we we are to um, pursue god and pursue this holy god and thereby his holiness okay so holiness is is very very important and when you're set apart for god you know it's um uh it's it's that determination to not get defiled okay so before i go further uh, pastor Roshan, i think i may overshoot time is it okay yeah, yeah pastor don't worry about it go ahead yes go ahead. okay, go okay. For it. Yes. Right. thank you so much okay. thank you all right so yeah holiness right so uh, in the life of daniel uh you you see his determination right to to live that dedicated life for god or you know if you want to use a bigger term uh, is a consecrated life for god but uh, simply put it just means belonging to god so when i belong to god i choose to do certain things and i choose not to do certain things right so when uh, daniel was offered food um, which which was defiled uh, he he said no it's okay you know, I'll just manage with with water, vegetables, and you check and see whether you know we we are doing okay at the end of um, you know that that time period. And obviously, in verses sixteen and uh, fifteen and sixteen of Daniel chapter one, you see that these Daniel and his friends were doing much better than all the others. So that is that determination, right? That we carry everywhere that we go and we say, hey. You know, I'm not going to defile myself. And since Pastor Roshan gave me extra time, I'm going to share one more testimony from my own life. Okay, so this is uh, again in college. Uh, and for whatever reason, I'm only remembering college stories. Um, so this was a class unit test. Um, 
can maybe it was surprise yeah so they just give a very short notice uh, and the strangest thing is that you know i i feel very ill right uh, at that time and um, mm, the concept was difficult so our instructor said it's an open no didn't not it was not an open book exam but like a class unit test and they they left the entire class and there was no invigilator okay it's a class unit test so you know sometimes how that works right in colleges <laughs> so uh, there i was feeling very weak didn't understand any anything of what was taught right and then um, all my classmates like my closest friends were like hey it's okay you can see you can it's okay we are all doing it and i'm telling you i don't know of one person in my entire batch who was writing on their own okay and that was like a big test for me because everybody knows i'm a believer okay and i'm talking oh that girl talks about jesus and all so not for that but you know really like the fear of god came over me and i was like you know as uh, esther said if i perish i perish right so i told myself if i fail i fail so don't show me anything whatever i know i'm going to write so i did that for that unit test and uh, the outcome is obvious i flunked that one paper okay it was a unit test i passed my exams but you know i flunked that unit test and in our college they would put the marks on the notice board so everybody who's walking by can see that you have failed okay so yeah that was like man what did daniel go through you know what did his friends go through it was all a reality for me you know if you if you want to live for god if you want to be consecrated there there is a price to pay small and big and i learned that lesson you know through that uh, unit test experience uh, but i'm telling you it's a it's a valuable thing because today when my uh, classmates talk to me jokingly uh, sometimes they say things like oh if there's anyone who deserves to have the degree it's you <laughs> because you wrote everything on your own right so but you know i'm just giving you a funny example but uh, god calls us to to stand up for the right thing to uh, you know walk in purity and holiness so that's a value that we must never let go of um, the fourth value here is courage okay and uh, the way you spell courage is f a i t h all right wrong english lesson but uh, um i think it's a good spiritual lesson the way you spell courage is f a i t h faith okay so when we carry this value of courage we are, we can keep going up higher with god okay and uh, i know uh, that this value when we are anchored in this value of courage you know, god will keep bringing you into open doors okay and it might feel very scary to enter them uh, but faith gives you the courage to actually walk through and a good example is that of peter right when jesus said come uh, or when jesus was walking on the water jesus said come right it would have taken courage on peter's part and faith of course you know for him to step out and uh, what happened as long as he was in faith and courage he was walking on the water okay so have courage as as um, you know children of god and that's a value that that will um, keep you anchored keep me anchored you know keep um, and also take us forward with god so you know four values uh, that that uh, we should be anchored in i'll just quickly go over them once again yeah so integrity is one excellence is the other purity is the third one and courage is the fourth one so finally last point uh, is uh, being anchored in purpose all right now uh, paul he um, he wrote this in in philippians he said not that i have already attained or am already perfected but i press on that i may lay hold of that for which christ jesus has also laid hold of me okay philippians 3:12 so we see here that paul understood that god lays hold of us right for a purpose that i may lay hold of that for which so that tells us there is a purpose obviously in paul's life 
know, he was called to um, be an apostle to the Gentiles. That was the purpose that, you know, God was moving him towards. But I want us to um, consider this as the third anchor in life when we are focused, right, um, about our purpose. Now, I know some of us might be like, you know, pastor, I have no clue, like tomorrow morning, I, what time to wake up, what to eat after waking up, you know, what to say, where to go, no clue, no problem. You know, it's a journey. So we, we are journeying and as we journey with God, the purpose will become clearer, uh, but we must pursue it, okay? But whatever pieces of the puzzle you have, hold on to it and keep asking God, God, sh show me what is that purpose? When, uh, you know, God begins to make this clear in our lives, uh, we will be steered in the right direction. And as I look back at, at my own life, you know, there are certain things that drove me, certain passions, ca causes that, you know, I was after all along. Uh, and as I look at my journey, I feel like, you know, that has directed me. In, in the path that God had for me. And it continues to, to spur me forward. So that purpose, pray about it. Keep asking God about it. In different seasons, different stages. And say, God, I want to know what your purpose for me is. Right? And that's why I put the word pursue. Pursue is you have to go after that. Right? You have to um, run after it. And as we do that, you know, you'll really find that that's an anchor because uh, as you're moving in that direction, you know, life vision will become clearer. Okay? Um, we will also begin to recognize the gifts that God has um, uh, imparted to us, given to us. You know, they'll begin to emerge and then you'll begin to figure out, oh, okay, wow, you know, these are the things that, that um, you know, God has blessed me with and I'm going to use it for him. So gifts will become clearer. God's grace on our lives. Grace is, you know, his empowering, uh, uh, the, the ability that God gives us, that becomes clearer uh, because you're pursuing it you're moving in that direction right and assignments okay should i do this should i do that but as you're pursuing god's purpose for your life your assignments become clearer right you know what you need to be doing or you will eventually know what you need to be doing the direction that you and i need to take in life but that also becomes clearer and uh, you know uh, above all when when we are pursuing the purpose of God and moving in that direction in God's will. Um, it's also uh, something that will give us incredible passion and energy because, you know, you, you love what God is doing in your life. You love the, the impact it's having on, on the kingdom of God, on, on the people around you, you know, um, lives are being touched and you're just so blessed to keep moving forward in that direction so you know stay anchored stay anchored in god's purpose for um you so these are the three uh, simple things that i wanted to put before us that will help us uh, in the easy seasons and also in the difficult seasons. so um uh, we must be anchored uh, in our identity we must be anchored in our values right godly values uh, and be anchored in god's purpose pursuing god's purpose for our lives uh, and when this happens you know this is a this is a recipe for strength okay this is a recipe for um steadfastness that that we um talked about earlier earlier uh, this evening and you know firmness and uh, we can continue to stay strong in god till the end Okay, so um, yeah, so I, I just uh, wanted to share this with us. Any thoughts, any comments? Um, all right. Uh, please feel free if there's anything you wanna ask. Okay, so maybe the questions will come to Pastor Roshan. So it's easy for me. I can just, <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and pray and then I think I'll hand it over to Pastor Roshan. Um, let's pray together.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time that you have given us, Lord, to um, uh, study your word, Lord, to understand your word, and Lord, above all, know your heart for us, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you that, Lord, um, uh, Lord, you have uh, saved us, oh God, and not just saved us, but Lord, you have established us, Lord, in your love. Lord, what a what a, a beautiful relationship, Lord, that, that we have in you. And God, this evening, I pray, Lord, for everyone on this call and everyone who hears this message i pray that lord uh, they will be anchored in you lord if there are things that are going on that that are unsettling and father god confusing distracting lord uh, oppressing uh, oh, oh, father lord i pray this evening god that that lord your love will secure uh, lord every single person lord lord in you father and lord i just pray for that grace i just pray for that strength and Lord, I pray especially for those, Lord, who are going through some deep, uh, uh, Lord, uh, challenges, Father God, and, and Lord, uh, emotional uh, struggles. Father, I pray that you will heal their hearts, Lord. I pray that you will heal their hearts. I take authority over every uh, assignment of the enemy, uh, oh God, which, which is... Um, uh, Lord, just beating against their minds, oh God. And Lord, I cancel and destroy those things in Jesus' mighty name. I declare freedom. I declare freedom by the Spirit. I declare liberty by the Spirit. And Father, I pray that all of us, Lord, strong and healthy, Lord, will, will uh, worship you, serve you, and God, um, reflect you, represent you, Lord, to the world around us. Thank you, God. Thank you for all that you are teaching us. Thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you, Pastor Nancy. They can, uh, Thank all you of you all send in a big God bless you to Pastor Nancy in the chat section. If you've been blessed, if, if you think this word was for you, just send an amen. Say God bless you, Pastor Nancy. Pastor, thank you so much uh, you know, for taking this time out and coming and just sharing this beautiful, beautiful, much needed word. Uh, you know, um, I think, yeah, there's also a couple of confirmation as in we just finished a series on character where we spoke on, you know, okay. integrity wow. and, uh, yeah, it's just so much in line. And I think Praise this God. season, just God, God is in this season of uncertainty, just yes. feel like God wants to build our character and, and everything else, you know. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank uh, you. And, thank yeah. you, Pastor Roshan. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for your uh, um, attentive listening <laughs> in the evening. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, hey, guys, uh, everybody else, yes, thank you. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, thank you for taking your time out on a Friday evening. And just, uh, thank you, Ruth, for leading us in worship. Uh, hope you all have a lovely weekend ahead. Okay, God bless you all. I'll see you again next week. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Good night. Good to see you. A lot of you all. Swarnima, good to see you. Join Varalakshmi, good to see you. Veronica, it's all awesome. Thanks for joining in, Rachel, Junior. Hope you're doing well. Take care, take care. Thanks for joining. Good night, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Manny, thanks for being a good person. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>